Hi guys, welcome to GetMatic. In the previous Q&A session, I solved one question that has been asked in Bark interview from Network Theory. Okay, and I explained this all the answer of these all questions according to the interviewer said. See, the interviewer said I1 is equal to tan angle minus 120 and I2 is equal to tan at an angle of plus 120. And based on that, I explained each and every point. Okay, I haven't explained you the correct answer of this question. So if I1 will be equal to tan at an angle of minus 120 and I2 will be equal to tan at an angle of one plus 120, then you will get the tan ampere net current, but you cannot make this tan angle minus 120 and plus 120 phase. So that is the reason I explained you like that. I explained each and everything according to interviewer asked. I haven't explained you the answer of this question. Suppose the if interviewer is saying that this is minus 120, this is plus 120, then you have to approach like that. And according to this condition. This question is wrong. That is what I explained there. Some of the student got confused that I can get the uh, answer by taking minus sixty plus sixty. That is correct. You can get the answer. That is the correct answer. But what ha what will happen if interviewer will say take take this ten at an angle of minus one twenty and take this ten at an angle of plus one twenty? Now explain whether it is possible or not. Then you have to approach like that. That is already explained in the. Previous lecture. Okay, so do not get confused. Of course, we can make it. Suppose the interviewer asking that for what uh, for what value of angle this is possible. If the interviewer says like that, then you can easily make both the I one and I two phaser by considering R L and R C circuit at an angle of sixty degree. Suppose you should take this reference zero. This is my zero degree. I one will be somehow here. I one will be let us say this is I two. I two will be At an angle of plus sixty, and I one will be at an angle of minus sixty. Is it fine? So net current you will get along the reference only, and net current will be equal to I one is equal to ten ampere. I net will be equal to ten ampere only. You can find like the same procedure that is already explained in the previous lecture. So for sixty degree leading and sixty degree lagging, it is possible to make this type of connection. But for plus minus one twenty degree, it is not possible. So what the interviewer try to do? Interviewer try to play with your mind. They said this is minus one twenty and this is plus one twenty. Now tell me, is it possible or not? That is the question. Okay, they made the conclusion by taking plus minus one twenty. That is the reason I explained these all things in twenty minutes. Otherwise, it will it would be very easy for me to explain these all things in five minutes by taking sixty degree angle. Is it fine? Now, if interview is saying, uh, can you make the circuit in which the angle of I one and I two will be plus minus one twenty? That is what I explained in the last five minutes of the previous lecture. Are you getting this? So answer will be plus minus sixty degree. Of course, many student have given the answer, and I have pinned the comment that uh, what will happen if the angle between I one and I two will be sixty plus minus sixty degree? Then it is possible, right? So do not get confused. If the interviewer asking like this, this this much only, then the answer will be sixty degree. But if interviewer is saying that this is plus minus one twenty, now tell me is it possible or not? Then you have to proceed like what I have explained you in the previous lecture. Are you getting this? So that is the main conclusion. Now in this video, Avijit, who himself got selected in bar exam, he will share the questions that is asked from power system and power electronics. So this is the part two. Part one is already explained in Q and A session zero four. Okay, so go through Q and A session zero four in order to see the questions from network theory and electrical machine. Now in this video, he will explain you the questions from power system and power electronics. So let's get started. I'm back with my BRC interview experience. In the last video, I discussed about the machines and the network theory part. And in this video, I will share the rest part, which is the power system and the power electronics. So first comes the power system. In the power system, the first question they asked me was this. They gave they gave me this diagram. You can see there are three conductors in this phase and one conductor in this phase. Each is each are separated at a d distance, and each conductor is of radius r. They asked me to calculate both the 
inductance and the capacitance so this is a very pretty easy question you can easily do it so first you have to find the gmd and the gmr and then you have to do it then they asked me what is gmd and what is gmr so i said then in the inductance part we had r dash part they asked me why you are say writing r dash instead of r so i explained what is the thing r dash and they asked me from where are you getting this r dash please show me so i showed that the internal inductance plus the total uh, the inductance to the whole current so i am giving r dash they then asked me what is internal inductance so i explained what is of the internal inductance means that, that the total current is not enclosed there and everything they asked me to derive the expression that is you need to derive the half into 10 to the power minus 7 henry per meter so i just did it and they said okay then they said why are you using r in the capacitance and r dash in the inductance why not r dash in case of capacitance too so i replied that in case of capacitance uh, we measure the potential difference so we know from the emft that 1 by 4 pi is translated into q by r i think or something like that therefore 1 by r comes in the denominator part so from there we just putting the r here there is no concept of internal anything i don't know what is right or wrong i know it was not that solid explanation but still they said okay it will do then they asked me okay if we increase the capacitance then what will happen so here i said that if we increase the capacitance then the characteristic impedance goes down and the sil goes up so and what then if we increase the capacitance in series of the line therefore the, it will decrease the reactance and that is the power transfer capability will increase and again if we increase the capacitance of the line to ground capacitance then in case of light loading ferranti effect will charging current will be high and the ferranti effect will occur then they said okay what is ferranti effect so i explained it they asked me to draw the phasor diagram and everything they asked me how will you overcome it it is the para switching in a parallel inductor and all they asked me to show it the phasor diagram and all then they asked me okay then what is the synchronous condenser so i said what is the synchronous condenser is the synchronous machine over at over expected condition uh, at no load so they asked me to draw about the v curve and all so i just explained them about the under excitation over excitation and power factor and all the next thing that they asked was uh, what is hunting so i explained the hunting with respect to synchronous machine then they asked me how will we overcome hunting so i said them we can use damper bars to damper the oscillation which will and you all know which will induce the rotor eddy current in the rotor structure and all so i explained this then they asked me what is the problem of dumping uh, what is the problem of hunting in the power lines so i said in the transmission lines due to the damping the power swing may occur then they asked okay power swing may occur then how will you detect it power swing or uh, what type of relay is used for it so i said in long lines we used more relays which is because of the power swing because the more relays has got the least coverage area so they said okay and uh, i think that was all for power system let me check once so that was all from power system part then they asked me oh, oh, actually when i said that about the emft part of uh, the potential difference one of the of the one of them asked me what is ampere circuited law yeah i just explained the ampere circuit law they said is okay and then comes the power electronics part okay the first thing that was asked in power electronics was how will you convert a 24 volt dc to 36 volt dc I said step up chopper, they said uh, tell me something else. So I said uh, the SMPS concept which is first of all you will take the DC and then you will pass to an inverter transformer. So it will get through AC with the stepped up voltage and then you will again rectify it. Okay then so okay, uh, then assume the operation of inverter transformer. I explained how to, con how to control the inverter transformer. Then they said uh, okay uh, inverter transformer how will you uh, control the duty cycle of the inverter transformer how will you control the frequency so i said how will i control the duty cycle the switching of the inverter transformer i used a bistable multiplier better or oscillator circuit that is actually so my bistable multiplier better to control it so i have just drawn it and explained the operation then they said okay then they said okay draw the chopper again with the draw the step up chopper now 
so I have done a step up chopper. Then they ask me to replace the switch if it is fully explain the working of the step up chopper. So I explained it. Then they asked me to uh, replace the switch of the step up chopper with the thyristor. So I did it. Then they asked me how uh, will you turn commute? What are the different ways to of commutation? So I explained the all the five. I said the five ways. Then they asked me to explain one of the ways for that specific thyristor to get commutated. So there I explained the voltage commutation. That is the class D form commutation. They asked me to draw the, all the waveforms. I draw. They asked me to what are the maximum current. What is the turn of time? Everything they ask me. You all you will get everything in the Swellsus video. It is all there. So they ask me the whole thing. With this, they said okay. Then they ask me one more question from that part, which I couldn't answer. They ask me we use a capacitor there, which is charged initially. We initially charge capacitor of the same volt uh, polarity. They are, okay. Then they ask me okay. We generally in the books the user. Uh, cap Catch, uh, we used a charge capacitor. Now tell me, how do you charge this capacitor? You have nothing else beyond this exact this circuit. What you have drawn a voltage commutation, nothing else. How will you do it? So I started with that. Uh, I will just isolate the commutation circuit. I will just directly connect it to the DC source to a resistance and on and on. They said no wrong. You are, it don't make sense. There's some other way to do it. So after giving a bit of try, they said no, it's not. So I said okay, sir. Probably I will be said. They said okay. Then the next question they asked me. I had said uh, in the machines part. I had said after VVF control. Uh, they said okay. You have said after VVF control. How will you make the VVF control? I said uh, I will use a three phase VSI voltage source inverter. Then they asked me to draw it. I had drawn a three phase VSI. So then they asked me okay. To explain the operation, I explained. I draw the I had drawn the 180 degree conduction mode. So they asked, okay, how will you actually control the frequency and the voltage? So actually, I felt he was asking about the switching, the about the controlling of the switch. So I said, if we use PWM, we can easily do it. Then uh, they asked me to show it on a, uh, on a reference wave along with a triangular wave, cutting it. So uh, if I can vary it, so we'll do it. They said okay, that will do. And what else they are does me? Let me check a bit. Yeah. So that was all from the uh, power trans part also. Next thing, what I will like to say one or two more things. That was all from my interview part, and I don't can't recall anything more. They had asked me. There are one or two things I will like to say. First of all, it happens in after get that if get occurs in February, and after get even even if you get struck, it may happen that. You go off when you getting the answer key since it is not going that high, mass is not getting that high. So it means you have got struck. It doesn't matter because you know you get a second chance in the March is BRC and then in May is ISRO. So don't leave the game just up to the gate. And the second thing is that I already said that uh, about the combination doesn't matter, that the it is a purely technical interview and one thing I would like to say that uh, about the dress code that I think dress code doesn't matter at all. But still, I think it's better to be informal because all those who will be taking the interviews are not just people. So I think you must maintain a decorum and always keep a happy face. And last thing I would like to say, if you have a, you don't know when we'll get to enter the interview room. So better take some food in the morning and then go. And so that's all and all the best.